speak to me when the silence steals my voice you understand me you understand me and come to me in the valley of unknowns you understand me you understand me you understand me god you understand me My doubts and fears don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought. So I stop all negotiations with the God of all creation. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought you were. I believe, but help my unbelief. You understand me. You understand me. And help me reach the faith that's underneath. You understand me. You understand me. You understand me, God. You understand me, so I throw all my cares before you, my doubts and fears don't scare you, you're bigger than I thought you were, you're bigger than I thought, so I stop all negotiations with the God of all creation, you're bigger than I thought you were. Bigger than I thought you were. I will rest in the Father's hands. Leave the rest in the Father's hands. I will rest in the Father's hands. Leave the rest in the Father's hands. I will rest in the Father's hands. Leave the rest in the Father's hands. I will rest, I will rest. Father's hands, leave the rest in the Father's hands. So I throw all my cares before you, my doubts and fears don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were, you're bigger than I thought. And I'll stop all negotiations with the God of all creation. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought you were. Praise the Lord. How good it is to praise to our God, to sing praise. It is pleasant and fitting to praise our Lord, for he heals our wounds. He binds us up. The Lord sustains the humble. So let's make music. Let's make grateful music to the Lord, for he is good. Those who delight in him will never be put to shame. Those who put their hope in his unfailing love. Good morning and welcome to worship. We are so glad that you are here worshiping with us today. Uh, every day that we get together and worship is a great day, isn't it, as we sing praises to God? But this is a special Sunday on, uh, on many fronts. We, uh, we're going to be celebrating communion. We're coming to the table today. We're also dedicating uh, or receiving five new members into the fellowship, which is a- another great thing. And then also we're dedicating another 
uh, stained glass window. So it's just a, a big Sunday filled with a lot of, uh, of awesome things as we celebrate our good God. Just a couple of announcements. It is Communion Sunday, and so for those in the balcony, make sure that you grab the communion there right inside the, the door of the balcony. Uh, and then those on, uh, at home that are watching online, uh, if you haven't gathered your supplies yet, now would be a good time to go get your supplies for communion. Uh, this is All Saints Sunday, and traditionally, uh, every year for many years, as we've printed bulletins, we've uh, made an insert that has a list of, um, of uh, those uh, members and friends of our church who have gone on to be with the Lord. And we've printed a list here. If you're interested in picking one up, there, it's back in the Heritage Room where the bulletins are laying, and you'd be able to pick one up. It's a good reminder of who we need to be praying for in the, uh, in the coming months. We have many things on the calendar that you need to please take note of. The uh, annual men's chili feed at the Crable Farm is this coming Saturday, November 7th. The details are in the Friday news email that we send out. Also, the 55 plus group is having their pie and bunco event next Sunday, November 8th. And uh, those details are in the bulletin, as, uh, the uh, Friday news email as well. The, uh, the event, usually known as the women's, uh, Covenant Women's Offer Fest, this year it's known as the Fall Fun Night is November 15th, Sunday, November 15th at 6.30 at the Heights. That's uh, Greg and Brooke Anna Peterson's farm. And again, the details are there in the um, Friday News email. Covenant World Relief. We are in the uh, season of uh, receiving money for Covenant World Relief. Just to remind you to uh, be putting money in your bank and bringing that back the Sunday before Thanksgiving. I believe that is November 22nd, Sunday, November 22nd. We'll receive that offering. We will receive coins bills, checks, whatever you want to uh, give. And every week we try to remind you of, of the great blessings that God has given us and the great need around the world. And, and this week in the Friday News, we remind you that many children throughout the world don't have a place to sleep. They don't have shelter. And so uh, Covenant uh, World Relief encourages you to put a quarter in your bank for every bed and every um, sleeping bag that you have in your home. Among the other ways that you give, do that as well. Also, Operation Christmas Child, the uh, cardboard boxes are down in the hospitality area where we drink our coffee. Please pick them up, fill them up, and bring them back to the church by November 15th so they can be mailed out for this Christmas. Again, that's just not so that children around the world can have Christmas presents, but they receive the, the message of the gospel as well. So it's a very important outreach. Uh, Bethany Home, uh, Bethany Village Christmas Gifts. Again, we're just doing uh, gift cards and cash this year. If you'd get those to uh, Bethany Home, uh, let's see, by November 29th, they would appreciate that. And then if you want to make cookies for that event, uh, bring them to Bethany Home by December 9th, by December 9th. There are more announcements to be made. Please go to the Friday News email and read through them carefully. Right now, we're just going to set all of that aside and, and, and go back to focusing on worshiping our God uh, as we continue in the lectionary, we have come to uh, the place in Matthew where we're looking at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on the Beatitudes this morning. Let's uh, worship the Lord who's given us the greatest sermon and great lessons in that sermon. Good morning, everyone. Uh, please stand with us and sing as we worship God together these next few songs. You are my vision, O oh King of my heart. Nothing else satisfies only you, Lord. You are my best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, your presence, my life.
see the king of glory coming on the clouds with fire the whole earth shakes the whole earth shakes Hosanna 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 in the highest Hosanna Yeah. 
Thank you, team. Psalm 96 says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Just as a reminder, our offering box is back in the heritage room as you leave. If you would uh, remember to put your offering back there, we appreciate your faithfulness to the ministry here and to the kingdom at large. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have the Friday news email. That is the list of... Uh, of announcements that we email out to everybody and included in that list is also a list of those people that we need to be praying for uh, and also the praises that we have for things that are going on in our midst and again I remind you to print that list out so you can have that prayer list in your Bibles and every day as you have your quiet time you can pray for the body of Christ uh, at, before we go to prayer though I would open it up and say ask if you have anything that you would add to that list are there any uh, praises or prayer requests you would share with the body this morning Craig Okay. I want to be praying for Holly. She's uh, not been feeling well for a while now, and so uh, just ask God's grace and healing on her. Are there any? Is there anyone else? Oh yes. Uh, where Ed? Yes. Okay, we want to pray for uh, Tim. That's uh, Tracy's, um, what was it? Uncle. uncle. Tracy's uncle has been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Pancreatic. Sorry. Pancreatic cancer. You'd think I had the mask over my ears. Sorry. Um, a pancreatic cancer. So please pray for Tim. It's a very serious, serious diagnosis. So please pray for Tim. Um, and there was, was there another hand over here somewhere? Jamie? Okay, how many years? 65. 65. Um, Jamie Weibert shares a praise. Her parents are celebrating their 65th wedding anniversary this week, the Chinbirds. 65 years. Congratulations. Yes, Chad. Just like with our country. Yes, yes, we want to be praying for our country, the elections, obviously, and, and um, Lord, we would commit that whole thing to prayer. Continue to pray. Uh, yes, Nancy.
Thank you, Nancy. That's a good reminder to, again, be praying for our country, for our leaders, for wisdom, and just for God's mercy and grace upon us. Yes, thank you, Nancy. We've got to put a star by our country there, and so we pray for it. Anyone else? Okay, before we go to prayer, we have a couple of other things that we need to acknowledge, and one is um, the, uh, the new stained glass window. To today, again, we are celebrating a new stained glass window in our church, and this uh, window is new, but yet at the same time, it's uh, very old. Uh, just as a reminder to most of you, uh, uh, this is actually the third sanctuary that we have had as the Lindsberg Evangelical Covenant Church. The uh, first sanctuary that we built on this site uh, was, it was uh, destroyed in a storm about six months after it was built. And then in, uh, 19, in, 18, in 1878, the uh, second sanctuary was built, and there you see the picture of it there on the screens. Uh, this uh, second sanctuary uh, was um, called the Onion Dome Church, be affectionately, because of the dome on top kind of looked like an onion. And uh, the Onion Dome Church was our place of worship for 50 years. 50 years we worshiped there. Uh, that's a long time. And uh, then in 1928, that, that sanctuary was, uh, was demolished to make room for the current sanctuary that we're in right now. And uh, when it was uh, taken down in 1928, uh, a local artist in town, Anton Pearson, came to be in possession of five of those stained glass windows from that building on the screen. And they were in his art studio for 90 plus years. Two years ago, Anton uh, Pearson's um, uh, grandson, Jim Malm, and his wife, Sheila, returned those windows to us. And so, uh, but they, being that they were 40, 142 years old, they needed a lot of restoration done on them, and uh, we were able to use Gretchen Peterson's memorial money uh, to restore all five windows. And all five windows have been restored, but they haven't all been ready to be displayed yet. Last October, we displayed the first of those windows back in the Heritage Room back there. And today, we are, uh, have unveiled the second of those windows. And if you put that window up, there's a picture of it. Many of you, most of you probably saw this as you came up today, as you went up the long stairwell into the sanctuary. This is the second of those windows. It's permanently hanging there. And if you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to stop by and see this uh, window. Uh, it's just magnificent. Our um, very own Craig Olson is the craftsman who, who made this window. And it wasn't easy to frame it. I'm sorry, he framed this window. And it wasn't easy with that, that, that uh, beveled frame. And uh, he also hung it, and he backlit it, and he just did an excellent job. And, um, and so I just, every time you see this window, I want you to remember, uh, and the other, the sister window there in the Heritage Room, I want you to remember that, that this, these windows are 142 years old, and that, that for 50 years, that window inspired worship in the Onion Dome Church. It was gone for 90 years, and, and now it's back with us, and it's really just a symbol of God's, God's sovereignty and God's faithfulness. So when you see these two windows, remember God's sovereignty and God's faithfulness. And, and may that be a symbol to us as we, as we celebrate uh, our great God. Psalm, four, Psalm 45, 145 says, One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. And we praise God for that. But we are not just, um, we're not just celebrating old things, we're celebrating new things today. I need to get my book. Today we are celebrating five new members who are joining our church. Now traditionally we would have them come up front and be clustered together with me and, and we're not going to do that in this season, but we do want to introduce them to you. So uh, 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 Veronica, we put the first, oh there we go, there's the Iyer family there. Brian and Anita Iyer are becoming members. And their son, Braden is also becoming a member. He finished confirmation, so he is eligible for membership. Uh, Sophie there, she's still in confirmation, so she's got a ways to go. But we'll get her too, I hope. Um, but So we're, we're, uh, Brian, Anita, and Braden are becoming members uh, today, and we welcome them. And with the next picture is Jalen Elseth. He is also becoming a member today. He's in high school. Uh, of course, the son of uh, Pastor Jeremy and uh, Jamie Elseth. And then the last one is Raina, Raina Decker, a daughter of uh, Joe and Bobby Decker. And there, I think every, all of the members are here. If you're, if you're going to become a member, would, would you please stand up just where you're at? And let's give them a hand. Applause 
There's four in the balcony and one down below. The second service is going to be real sad that nobody from the uh, class is going to be there. That's okay. They'll see your picture. Um, and so we rejoice because we know that our congregation here, the Lindsberg Evangelical Covenant Church, is just one expression of the, the larger church. And we are so glad that not only has God called you five to be a part of the family of God, but has called you in this season to be partners with us as we, as we seek to love the Lord and uh, make his uh, love known to others. Uh, these folks have uh, already confessed that they believe that Jesus is the Savior and the only uh, way to uh, peace with God. They've confessed that, um, that the Bible is the only perfect rule for faith, doctrine, and conduct. And so we just want to welcome you again, uh, and we're so glad that you're partnering with us in ministry. Let's, uh, let's commit them to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for these, uh, these new members. They're, um, they're old friends, but new members, and we thank you for that. And we pray that we would be able to love them and care for them and meet their needs, and that they would also be able to love and care for us, and that together uh, we would partner up to share your love and your truth with the Smoky Valley. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you get a chance uh, after the service, make sure you greet these five new friends. Let's, um, let's go to the Lord in, uh, with the pastoral prayer now. Lord Jesus, uh, this morning as we celebrate the 242-year-old uh, stained glass windows, Lord, we're not only acknowledging that you, you are sovereign and you are faithful, but even more so, we're acknowledging that you've been working in Lindsberg long before any of us were ever born. Long before any of us here uh, came to be, you were working. You were loving people. You were pursuing people. You were saving people in the Smoky Valley. And these windows are just a reminder that, that what's happening here is that we are, are joining you that we have the privilege in this season to let your light shine through us so that we too might display your glory, your love, and your truth. And, and our desire is that you would be glorified in, in our lives and, and through our actions, and especially in this coming week. And, and Father, as we, as we receive these five new members into our fellowship, we see that you are still doing new things in Lindsberg that you are still about growing your church and, and making disciples and, and loving people into eternity. And, and so, Lord, this morning we ask uh, that you would bless Jalen and, and Raina and Brian and Anita and, and Braden. And Lord, we, we, as we pray for them, we have confidence that you are not done building your kingdom in the Smoky Valley. And again, we want to be a part of that. And so with these two stained glass windows, we look confidently at our past, knowing that you are faithful and sovereign. And, and with these five new members, we look confidently to our future, knowing that you are not done here. And again, we ask that you would let us be a, a small part of building your kingdom. Father, you call us to pray for our, our leaders that they might lead well and so that we might have peace and so that we might be better able to share the gospel. And so we pray for our leaders from the president on down, on down to the mayor. And with this week, we not only pray for our leaders and the wisdom that they need and the grace that they need and the courage that they need, we also just pray for the process that de determines who our leaders will be. And Lord, may, may the elections this week be safe and secure. And Lord, whoever wins, may we as your people, may we be good citizens of heaven and good citizens of the United States. Lord, we also want to lift up our family and friends who are hurting and who need your healing. And, and there's a long list printed in the Friday news. And to that list, we add Holly and, and Tim. And we pray your mercy on them. And, and for Lois Baker and her family as they grieve the death of her sister, Lord, comfort her. And Lord, for those who are celebrating, for Sue Dahlstein and for Angie 
and, and for the Chinbergs, Lord. We, we celebrate with those who celebrate and we grieve with those who grieve. And we bend our knee again and acknowledge that you are the sovereign God. You are the great physician. You are our healer. You're our redeemer. You're our sustainer. And we commit ourselves anew to you this day. And we do it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. This can be found on page 1505 in the Pew Bibles. Matthew, chapter 5. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity, we do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Of course, this is the preamble to the United States Constitution. It's one of the most memorable statements in American history. Many of you probably have it memorized. This preamble says in one sentence what the essence of this new nation called the United States was going to be when, when this document was written. The preamble gives insight into to the intentions of the framers of the Constitution. And the details of, of that will be spelled out with the rest of the Constitution, but the intentions and the essence of what was going to be, what this document was, was secured in that one sentence. Well, in a similar manner, the Beatitudes are sort of a preamble to the Sermon on the Mount. You can think of the Beatitudes as, as a as a, as a uh, preamble, they, the, the Beatitudes begin the Sermon on the Mount. The Beatitudes, what they do is they give a summary of the essence of this new thing that Jesus is starting on earth, the kingdom of heaven. 
It's a new work, like the, the, the United States was a new idea when the Constitution was written. When Jesus preaches the Sermon on the Mount, this is a new idea, bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. And the Beatitudes give a brief description of what the people who follow Jesus, what they will look like and what they will act like, what people who are a part of this kingdom, what principles and priorities and values they will have. The Beatitudes are, are eight statements that, that Jesus makes, again, at the beginning of, of his, his most famous sermon ever, the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is, is one of the reasons it's the most famous. is It's the longest sermon ever recorded of Jesus. It takes up all of Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. Perhaps no other religious teaching in the history of humanity has attracted so much attention or have had, has had so many devotees as the Sermon on the Mount. Philosophers and activists from many, from many non-Christian uh, perspectives, uh, people who have refused to worship Jesus, nevertheless have admired his teachings and his ethics that were put forth here in the Sermon on the Mount. As a matter of fact, in the 20th century, uh, Gandhi was uh, the Sermon on the Mount's most famous uh, non-Christian admirer. But the most well-known portion of the Sermon on the Mount, again, is this opening portion, this preamble known as the Beatitudes. It's our text for this morning. And again, it's a series of eight statements that Jesus makes to begin this important sermon that inaugurates the kingdom of heaven coming to earth. These beginning eight statements of the Sermon on the Mount are called the Beatitudes because of the repetition of the word blessed at the beginning of these eight statements. You'll see them on the screen. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Again, the word beatitude, it, it, it's, it comes from the Latin word for blessing. So now you know why it's called beatitudes. It's, it's a list of blessings. In this section, Jesus is pronouncing blessing after blessing for those who are a part of this new work, this new thing, the kingdom of heaven. And as, as with all of scripture, because it's living and active and, and sharper than any double-edged sword, uh, there's so much more here than we can cover in just a few minutes this morning. And so... So really with these eight blessings, we could communicate so much that we could easily make this an eight-week sermon series, right? And spend a week on each of these, of these uh, attributes and why they're a blessing. But because we only have a few minutes this morning, I want to try to squeeze all eight into just a little bit of time here. I want us to focus on two overriding uh, ideas. As you come to the Beatitudes and you see each individual thing listed, I want you to try to remember two overall concepts that will help you um, understand the Beatitudes. First, the uh, Beatitudes describe Christians. This list of eight things, these eight blessings, these, these are, this is a description of a Christian, of someone who's a part of this kingdom, this new work that Jesus is inaugurating at the beginning of Matthew. So always think of these things as a description of who you are. Second thing to remember is the Beatitudes are a congratulations to Christians. You're being congratulated in these, in these eight uh, Beatitudes. So, so if you remember nothing else from this morning's message, please try to remember, maybe even write it in the margin of your Bible, if you, if you write it in your Bible. Write the two words, uh, describe and congratulate. They describe you and they congratulate you. And I want to spend the rest of the morning uh, looking at those two things. But, but said in another way, the Beatitudes communicate the values of those living in God's kingdom. And the Beatitudes communicate the rewards to those living in God's kingdom. They, they, um, they communicate the values of kingdom members. And they communicate the rewards of kingdom members. Let's look at these Two aspects. First, when you read the Beatitudes, see them as a description of you, a description of Christians. 
Jesus was describing you. He was describing members of this new work, members of the kingdom of God, and um, what they will look like and what they will act like. He's describing Christian values, characters, actions. He's, he's describing you. You're going to be poor in spirit. You're going to be those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Now, let me just briefly say something about each one of those. Um, a, a Christian is poor in spirit, and what that basically means is just that we're not proud. We're not proud. We live our lives knowing that we need God. And that apart from Jesus' work on the cross, his death on the cross, for the forgiveness of our sins, we have no hope. That's what that means, to be poor in spirit. So that when we first come to God, we know that we are completely bankrupt spiritually. We're poor in spirit. We're bankrupt spiritually, and we depend completely on him. Secondly, a Christian is someone who mourns. That is, We grieve over our sin. Our sin has broken our heart, and it's caused that grief has caused us to repent, to go to Jesus and ask for forgiveness. But it doesn't that 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 mourning doesn't stop with our own sin. We we grieve um, when other people suffer. When we see suffering around the world in, in our neighborhoods, we grieve, and that grief causes us to do something. It's not just a grief that causes us to feel bad but it's a grief that causes us to to act, to help, to relieve suffering. Third, a a, a Christian is meek. And this word meek, it means gentle. It means humble. And as we exercise meekness, what that means is that we'll be quick to live out the golden rule, to put others before ourselves, Jesus says that uh, a Christian, somebody that's going to be a part of this work called the kingdom of heaven, a Christian will hunger and thirst for righteousness. And, And to hunger and thirst means to have an intense longing that you need satisfied. You need it satisfied or you're going to die. And the necessity that we need satisfied is to to be in a right relationship with God and to be in a right relationship with each other. We, uh, people who are part of the kingdom of God, we yearn for right relationships. The psalmist writes, as a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for the living God. As Christians, we hunger for God, for a deeper sense of God's presence. But, but we also, as we hunger for righteousness, we're also hungering for the end of evil's influence. We hunger for God's will to be done. We hunger for for God's complete justice to be served to all. We hunger for righteousness. A Christian is merciful. To be merciful is to be compassionate for those who have need. And this mercy is less of an attitude again, and it's more of an activity. It's not just that we feel bad for people who are suffering. We, We do something about it. We help the poor and the oppressed. A Christian, Jesus says in the Beatitudes here, is, is someone who is pure in heart. And to be pure in heart, that's, that's to be morally pure in heart. That's, that's someone who's characterized by um, always wanting to please God. That their, their first and foremost desire is to do what will make God happy. To be pure in heart is to have that single-minded commitment to to God, to always want to do the right thing. A Christian is also, Jesus says, a peacemaker. To be a peacemaker, again, this involves action, not just living a peaceful life. Peacemakers don't just want peace in their own life and and try not to cause trouble. Peacemakers actively seek reconciliation between individuals. They seek to reconcile individuals. They seek to reconcile groups of people who are in conflict with each other. And finally, a Christian will be persecuted. Where there is evil in the world, Christians need to speak out and condemn that and work against that evil. 
and inevitably, because of our actions and our, and our words, uh, people are going to try to silence that voice. When you take your faith seriously, you will have to take stands on moral issues and, and, and don't be surprised when you are attacked for those stands. So in the Beatitudes, what Jesus is doing here is he's, he's describing Christians. And what he's doing is he's calling for disciples. He's not, just, he's not just asking for believers, for people who believe in these principles. He's asking for people who, who live these principles, whose lives are described by these principles. Jesus is saying that, um, that a member of the kingdom of God is someone who commits their hands to this, not just their heads. They do the right thing, not just agree about what the right thing to do is. And so one of the things that we need to do as we, um, through, the, through the years, through the rest of our lives, as we read the Beatitudes, as we read this list of eight things, as we hear it read or as we study them, we need to realize that the Beatitudes are describing what a Christian is and what a Christian does. Who we are and what we do. And so what this list does is it becomes a good way for you to evaluate your walk with the Lord. If you ever wonder, I wonder how I'm doing with my walk with the Lord. I have my quiet times and, and I pray before my meals and I go to church. Am I a good Christian? Am I walking with the Lord? How, how am I doing? If you want to evaluate that, Go to the Beatitudes and look at the list that Jesus uses to describe those who are in the kingdom. And ask yourselves, um, am I known by these things? Am I characterized by these things? So one major purpose of the Beatitudes is to describe a Christian. A second major purpose of the Beatitudes is that Jesus wants to congratulate anyone who chooses this life. He wants to congratulate anyone who chooses to be his disciple. He wants to congratulate anyone who chooses to follow these values. The Greek word translated blessed here means someone who's to be congratulated for their position in life. When Jesus says blessed, he's saying congratulations for the, your position in life. You're to be congratulated because you're in a, in a place in life that's to be envied. That's what this word blessed means. You're to be envied. Christians are to be congratulated because, like the, Beati like the Beatitudes say, we have so much. We're in a good position in life. What do we have? What are we to be envied for? Jesus tells us here we have the kingdom of God. Jesus tells us that we're to be congratulated because, because God's the one who comforts us. We're to be congratulated because Christians um, will inherit, we are going to inherit a new heaven and a new earth. We're to be congratulated because we are, are going to be filled with righteousness. We're to be congratulated because God is showing us mercy. We're to be congratulated because we are going to see God face to face. We're to be congratulated because we are sons and daughters of God right now. We are blessed. We are in an envied position. We have all of those things. And, and let me point out that these congratulations belong to Christians, these congratulations are not just a, 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 a congratulations for some glory that we're going to receive at some future point when we, when we all meet up at heaven. It's a blessedness that exists in a large part right here and right now. It's not something that we will just enter. We're already entering it. The kingdom of God is already here. True, the, 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 the blessings that... Jesus is talking about here will find their fullness at the end of time and the best is yet to come but these blessings are also to be experienced in part and sometimes in full right now because the kingdom of God Jesus has inaugurated it here with this sermon he's brought it to us now 
And so the Beatitudes are, are saying, in essence, oh, the delight of being a Christian. Oh, the joy of following Christ. Oh, the absolute happiness of knowing Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. You are in an envied position. And so to review, the Beatitudes do two things. They describe Christians, and the Beatitudes congratulate Christians. And in light of Jesus' message here in the Beatitudes, I want to encourage us as we come to the table now, as we, as we do that, do it in one of two ways. I, wouldn't, I want to give you specific directions here. First, maybe as uh, one way that you might come to the table is as you heard Jesus' description of a disciple in these eight characteristics here in the Beatitudes, maybe you felt the Holy Spirit prick your heart in one of those areas or a couple of those areas and, and where you, you realize that you don't really line up very well there. And if this happened to you, then, then come to the table this morning and, and ask Jesus to empower you to empower you to live the Beatitudes. Confess your shortcomings and recommit yourself to walking day by day and moment by moment in the power of the Holy Spirit and, and, and that these attitudes would indeed start describing you, all of them. That's one way you might come to the table this morning. The, the other way I encourage you to consider coming to the table this morning is as you... I went back through and saw this list of congratulations here, these eight congratulations. Uh, maybe you just need to sit quietly and look at that list. Veronica, will you put that list back on the screen, the eight Beatitudes? Just look at that list and just leave it up through communion. And, and just look at that list and, and, and know that Jesus is congratulating you personally for walking with him for choosing to be loved by him and love him and, and follow him and obey him. And as you, as you read that list of blessings during communion that Jesus has given here, understand that, that Jesus is speaking these very words to you. He's congratulating you. So come to the table, table today to, to be empowered or, or come to the table today to be encouraged but, but either way, come to the table. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as always, the first thing we have to do is just thank you for trusting us with your word, for giving it to us, for allowing us to know a part of your mind, a part of your heart, for letting us to know the, who we are in you and how we are to live. And we pray that these words, we would not just be hearers of these words, but, but we would be livers of these words, that we would be doers of these words. That this, this preamble to the Sermon on the Mount would be a list of eight things that describe everyone who attends the, the Covenant Church here. That people in town would say these things about us because we are walking with you. And that you'd be, you would be glorified in that. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to the table, just a couple of instructions. Uh, you have in front of you, if you're in the pews in the lower uh, portion of the auditorium, uh, there's a pre-packaged communion. And just as a reminder, there's two... Uh, there's two tabs that you need to peel back. That first tab is a very thin layer of cellophane. Peel that back and you'll get to the bread, the wafer part, and then the, the larger uh, tab, you peel that back and you'll get to the grape juice that's there. And before we go to communion, I just wanna say a couple of words. Um, the Beatitudes are much like the uh, fruit of the Spirit. Um, I don't want you in any way to go home and think to yourself, I need to live out these eight Beatitudes and I'm going to 
focus on one and do one until I get it down. And then I'm going to go to the next one and work on that one and force myself to, to do that second beatitude until I get to the third one. That's not how the beatitudes work. They, they do describe who a Christian are, but to get those attributes in our lives, we don't focus on the attributes. We focus on Jesus. And just like the fruit of the Spirit, you don't focus on the fruit. You walk close with Jesus, and the fruit will automatically come. It's the same way with the Beatitudes. We don't have to walk around trying to be mournful and trying to be sorry for our sins and trying to, to hurt when we see other people hurting. We don't, we don't, that's not what we're supposed to do. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to walk with Jesus, to love him, to talk to him, to let him talk to us, to worship him to draw close to him. And when we do that, we're going to find that we just automatically grieve when we sin. And we're going to be convicted and we're going to repent of it right away. And when we see injustice and when we see people being hurt and we see people who are hungry and, and, and homeless, we're going to naturally automatically grieve. We don't have to create some kind of a sadness for them. It will just be a part of who we are as we walk. We won't be able to help ourselves. And that's the way it will be with all of the attributes uh, that are listed here in the Beatitudes. Don't focus on doing the attributes. Focus on walking with the Lord. And that's what the table is all about. Every time we come to the table, we're reminded we do nothing in this equation in our relationship with God. We just come with open arms. We let Jesus do all the work. He's the one that did all the work. He's the one that has saved us. He's the one that will produce the fruit in us as we walk with him. So the table is a constant reminder that what we ultimately need to do is draw close to Jesus. So again, as, the, as um, we play some music and have some time of reflection here in just a moment, come to the table and ask the Lord to draw you closer to him if, if you're falling short in some of those areas. Or just sit there and let the Lord love on you as he congratulates you for your envied position you're in as a member of the kingdom of God. Now here are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are given by the Apostle Paul. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. He was with his followers and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The Apostle Paul says, in the same way on that night, Jesus took the cup. He was with his disciples and as he poured it, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink of it, all of you. The Apostle Paul ends that teaching in Corinthians by saying, for as often as we eat the bread and we drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Just as a little reminder, you don't have to be a member of the Lindsberg Evangelical Covenant Church to partake of the elements. You just need to be a member of the family of God. That means if you're trusting Jesus' work on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, then you're welcome to take and eat the bread together. And we'll do that together after we're gonna, I'm gonna give a little bit of time here where we can reflect and let the Lord speak to us and we can talk to the Lord while some music's playing. And then when that's over, we will partake of the elements together. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.
Jesus said, this is my body. Take and eat. And Jesus said, this is my blood. Take and drink. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for coming and bringing your kingdom to us. Thank you for making the way for us to enter that kingdom, to live in that kingdom, to live the kingdom's values. Lord, help us to be faithfully drawing close to you every day so that these eight attributes of, of Christians would be lived out in us. Lord, that people would see our good works and praise you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to walk through the Beatitudes as we sing this next song. Um, it starts out with humility, um, admitting that we're spiritually bankrupt without God, like uh, Pastor Jeff was saying, um, that we need God, that we are thirsty and hungry for God, um, that we want to have a single-minded commitment um, to, to serve others as Jesus has served us, and, um, and that, yeah, really, um, we should be asking, um, you know, it's, it's not ab about being perfect, it's not about... Um, like he said, like nailing down each beatitude, um, it's it's more about are we are we living for God and living for Christ, um, sanctifying ourselves, getting getting better each day, and, and pursuing God, or are we just um, as this song talks a little bit about like abusing the grace God has given us? Are we just taking it for granted? And so we can ask ourselves as we sing this, how can we sanctify ourselves and, and change to be better each day, to better reflect um, what Christians, you know, these the Beatitudes, to better reflect those. And then we're going to sing another song where we basically um, are giving God the credit for um, the positive change in our lives and for who he is. And then we're going to close with a song that celebrates Christians, um, like, the, like Jeff was talking about in the sermon, um, celebrates Christians. And, um, and how we are blessed in every situation um, because God is never going to let us go. So let's stand together and uh, sing these next three songs.
like sweet, sweet honey on my lips, like the sound of a symphony to my ears, it's like holy water.
receive the benediction to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious throne without fault and with great joy to the only God our Savior be glory majesty power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore amen go in peace